Welcome to my tutorial for gun smoke for the arcade. And yeah, for this one, I actually made some notes so I can uh, try to remember to cover everything. But yeah, this game took 20 plus hours to complete, and it's only a 30 minute game. So it's possibly the hardest 2D game I've ever completed. Extremely unpredictable, even when you know most of the spawns, because they can change for no clear reason. And to put it in perspective, take an extreme game like God Hand on hard mode for the PlayStation 2, which I have a tutorial up on that mode, and it's a four and a half hour long game without deaths, and it took around 35 hours for me to beat. And if Gunsmoke was at length, it would take something like 280 hours to complete. So the, uh, you know, the successful footage that I show in the tutorial really doesn't do the difficulty of this game justice. It's really an extreme fucking game, and... Um, you know, this is a tutorial, but it's just commentary over my playthrough that I did, and I'm just trying to break everything down. So um, it's it's not going to be something that, you know, that can guide somebody through the game step by step. It's pretty much it would be impossible for me to, to, to actually try to do that with, you know, with voice. I mean, I don't even know the game that well because the game changes so much and you really have to be able to react. So there's certain crowd control and certain techniques that are going to get you through the game. And even for, like, expert players who have a lot of experience with games, you're going to have a hell of a fucking time trying to beat this game. I mean, pretty much the developers fucking hate you and they want your money. So this is going to be the kind of game that, you know, even at a very high level of, of play. Like, I, for example, you know, I've beaten around 1,500 console and console-style games. And I don't say that to boast. I just say that to say that this game... You know, there's parts like there's a, a, a 60 second part that took me about nine plus hours to complete. So, you know, you got to try to understand how how fucking difficult this game really is, you know, to get an idea. So if you are a, um, you know, more of a beginner player or even an intermediate player, um, unless you want to increase your skill in a very brutal and uncomfortable way, you know, I would recommend not trying to beat this game, you know. Because it's going to be a fucking, you know, it's it's going to be a real fucking test. I mean, you will become a better player. There's no way around it if you force yourself to play through it. But personally, I prefer more gradual steps with uh, with getting better at games. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, it's a brutal fucking game. Another thing to recommend that I pretty much would say is essential is that you use a joystick for this game on Mame and set it to turbo for the three fire buttons. There's a left fire, middle fire, and right fire button, which, you know, the controls I don't really need to explain too much because that's pretty basic. Now, if you combine two of the fire buttons, you'll get these different weird firing angles that really are very slight variances of the main three firing angles, which I found completely useless. I never used them intentionally, so keep that in mind. I recommend setting all three of those fire buttons to rapid fire. And um, if you don't have a joystick, you can use a pad, a game pad, but I would say make sure it has rapid fire on it. And um, you want to use an overhand grip, meaning you want to have one finger on each of the three firing buttons. So you should have, you know, a finger on each firing button because you need to be able to fire in a direction fucking immediately. You can't be any kind of delay. If you try to hit all three fire buttons with your thumb, you know, by playing with the pad in a standard way, and using your thumb to hit all the fire buttons, there's like it's going to be fucking insanely difficult. The game is already insanely difficult with turbo and with an overhand grip. So make sure you're either using an overhand grip on the three firing buttons. And for me, the easiest way to do that was to use a, a Rav uh, Rav4 joystick. You know, just basically a Hori joystick. I like those a lot because the uh, the joystick is so fucking smooth. But even the uh, the Mad Cats joysticks, anything like that, any kind of modern joystick is similar to that. And it had, you know, they have like really clicky, great, accurate control. But the main thing is not even the stick. The main thing is having a finger on each one of those buttons that you can just hit immediately and setting those buttons to turbo. That's going to be like one of the first things that it's easy to overlook. So I just want to make sure I cover that. So, um, yeah, now the first few levels, the first two levels, not much for me to explain. These are very easy, these first few levels. If you have trouble with these, you're really going to be in fucking trouble because this game doesn't really show you what kind of difficulty it's made out of until the third level boss. Even the third stage gets pretty tough, the stage itself. And there are some tough stages, but the stages are nothing compared to some of the boss fights. 
So the ninja is going to be your first real trial. So while this is happening, I can try to cover some more things. Now, the way the power-ups work is there's a rifle power-up. That gives you a further shot distance. So you're going to use that to get more distance on your shots, which is really, really useful. The uh, bullet power-up gives you a faster rate of fire, which I think even with rapid fire, it probably still increases your rate of fire if you're using a rapid fire controller. But I'm not 100% on that if you're using a rapid fire controller. I, I think it does. And the boot makes your foot speed faster, which is super, super fucking important. Now, the way the power-ups work is you can only get one of each power-up from what I understand. But on the bottom of the screen, it's going to show boots stacking, bullets stacking, and rifles stacking. And it's going to make you think that if you get multiple rifles, you're going to increase your shot distance multiple times. Now, from what, I, from what I've taken in from the 1cc runs that I've watched and from one tutorial and just playing the game is that the power-ups do not stack in that way. So if you get the rifle, it only has one upgrade. There's no you know, triple upgrade by getting three rifles. The reason they stack on the bottom of the screen is if you lose a life. You'll, you'll lose like a, one of each power-up if you lose a life, I believe. Or if you pick up the cow skulls, they strip one of each power-up from your inventory. But they don't stack as far as effectiveness. So, you know, don't worry about trying to collect multiple boots or whatever. Because we're not, we're not doing a tutorial here for a 1cc fucking run. You know, that's a whole other fucking thing. And there is videos like that, but they're not really, you know... To, to really do that, you have to have at least beaten the game normally first before you even attempt a 1cc run, you know, which is, you know, without losing any continues, which would be fucking insane. But the idea behind that would be completely different. You know, you want to stock up on extra lives and you want to always be powered up. Now, see, with this tutorial, you're not always going to be powered up. Most of this tutorial is going to show starting at each checkpoint with no starting power-ups because you lose them when you die. I went checkpoint by checkpoint through the entire game, so... You're going to see what it's like to beat each checkpoint, you know, without any starting power-ups and having to get them as you go. So that's one unique thing about this tutorial that's going to cover if you're actually trying to beat the game, as I did, with just, you know, doing it by checkpoint by checkpoint. Now, this was a project that took a few years for me to beat and probably over 20 hours of gameplay. I did it very on and off. It wasn't a consistent thing because it was a stressful fucking game. But um, it took several years, I mean, maybe over three years. So... Yeah, it was a project, you know. It wasn't really a focus, but... Um, so, yeah, I recommend using an emulator, obviously, because you're not going to leave an arcade machine on for three years, right? So, use an emulator. Use save state just to save where you're at. And use save and load states to practice specific parts. You want to use save and load states on the boss fights to practice them, isolated practice on just the boss. And when you're making a save state... Make it in the gap before the boss appears. Don't make it right on the boss fight because otherwise you're going to load the state and die instantly. And you're going to be reloading the state again then dying instantly. And you're going to get really mentally exhausted doing it that way. So make sure you save state and a little bit of a gap right before the boss appears. So that way you have enough time to put your hand back on the joystick, get into position, get ready to, to start playing again. You know, Because if you, if you set, it, set the state in a bad area, you're going you're to have to keep reloading it. It's a small detail, but it's something that saved me a lot of frustration when you're practicing a boss for fucking hours straight. Like I said, some of these bosses took nine hours. One of them took nine hour, over nine hours. Another took six and a half hours. This ninja took three or four hours. Now, with this ninja, you're going to have to manage all the enemies, obviously, like always. But you're going to have to just get into a rhythm with trying to lure him out to throw his stars and then move. So you're constantly going to be wanting to move in left to right constantly because... The ninja stars, like many projectiles in this game, are going to be aimed at the last location you were in. So if you're constantly moving left and right, you have a much greater chance of not getting hit. But you got to be able to do that and be kind of cognitive of what's going on and, and, and trying to manage everything else. Like I said, I mean, trying to explain this game would be a fucking nightmare. I mean, it is really only so much that I can say that's going to help. But I do have some very specific strategies that are going to make some parts a lot less painful. So, I mean, I can at least offer that. The most dangerous enemies in the game are these gray enemies right here with the brown vests. These stupid looking generic fucking enemies are the most annoying fucking enemies in the game because these enemies will um, get behind you. Once these enemies get behind you, you're often fucked, meaning you're, there's, there's, there's very little way to survive a lot of times. 
So the idea is to kind of memorize their spawns if you can, because spawns don't, are not even consistent all the time. But they can be somewhat memorized. And what I mean by spawns is where the enemies pop out at. You want to try to memorize them as much as possible and take the guys out immediately. See having these guys behind me? That was very fucking dangerous, very bad. So in that situation, you know, that, that could have easily just been a death. The, guy, the enemies are very accurate, very fast, and precise. And um, you really don't want those guys getting behind you like that, you know. So th the idea is crowd control. You really want to try to take the enemies out before they can get behind you. Mainly those gray, those gray enemies because other, there's other enemies that can get behind you like this purple guy and not be a problem because uh, they won't turn around and try to shoot you in the fucking back. But these gray guys always will turn around and tr keep shooting you in the back while you're trying to uh, manage everything else. So keep that in mind. Obviously, you shoot the barrels to get the power-ups. Now, one thing I'm going to recommend for a lot of the game is to not worry about power-ups when you're playing checkpoint to checkpoint like this because you're not doing a 1cc run. So um, this is a very easy boss, so I'm not really going to say much about this. But when you're, um, when you're playing a lot of these difficult sections... Just remember, like, don't always go for the power-ups when you're going checkpoint to checkpoint. If you're trying to get to a boss, then, yes, learn how to get the power-ups on that checkpoint so you can bring them to the boss fight. It's going to help immensely. Remember, you only need one of each power-up, the boot, the bullet, and the rifle to have full power-up. The horse is very rare. It'll give you a few extra hits, but it, it dies very fast, and it's rare. And there's no boss checkpoints where the horse is on the boss checkpoint. So if you get to a boss checkpoint and you already died, you're not going to get the horse and bring it to the boss. So, you know, I never really, I never had the horse to use on the bosses. You know, unless it was like maybe the first level or something. But, you know, for the most part, the first two levels are pretty damn easy. That last level was, was like an easy break after the ninja. You know, if you beat the ninja level, you're not going to have a problem with that boss or that level. Now shit gets fucked up. This is the fifth level. And this is when shit gets pretty fucked up. So... The level itself, I think, it, it, you know, quite difficult. But like I said, all the levels pale in comparison to some of these boss fights. That's going to be your main challenge. But yeah, there are tough levels. You're going to learn crowd control because if you don't, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to get... Luckily, the checkpoints are, are short in this game. But they're extremely fucking dense. And, um, you know, short doesn't make it easy because the game is just fucking ridiculous. But the boss was, was a nightmare for me. I mean, I... Um, there was a guy who did a, a one credit run of the game, and he did somewhat of a tutorial. He basically just did commentary over his playthrough, like what I'm doing. But um, he said that the way that I fought the fifth boss um, was pretty much impossible to do. I mean, he was basically saying, don't ever do that when you try to play the game. Now, I didn't know the trick back then. There is a trick to the boss, and I saw him do it in his video. So I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. I don't think he had a video up on YouTube. I saw it through another uh, a Twitch stream. So I'm going to have to just um, try to explain the, the uh, technique. But basically what I'm going to say is you don't want to try to fight the boss the way I did unless you really want hours and hours of extreme frustration. What you're going to see me doing on this boss, it's, it's something that I actually did for much longer at periods, this uh, dance of death with the boss. But I didn't beat it, so I never. I, so of course that's not getting posted here. It is posted in my raw practice and failure footage. But yeah, you see me dancing here. I'm staying just out of range of like every fucking bullet, and dodging everything, and managing these fireballs, which are super fast that the boss throws, and they home directly on your last position. Extremely difficult to dodge those things. So I'm managing all that at once, and it's fucking brutal. And I'm actually making it look easier here than it usually is for me because I was hitting the boss more consistently. Before, I was not even hitting the boss that often, and I was dancing like this for a long fucking time. And, um, you know, to say it was brutal is an understatement. It was fucking extreme. Because you die in one hit in this game. So, the trick is to say on the right, to, to leave all the gunners in the left window. For the, for the, you know, unless you play it the way I played it, you want to leave all the gunners in the left building alive. Because it'll, it'll make it so less enemies spawn on the field. You leave them all alive. And you go to the right side of the screen, all the way to the right edge of the screen. And you go slightly above where the boss's fireballs come down at. And you fire diagonally up at the boss. And his fireballs won't be able to hit you if you're right above him there. And shooting diagonally into him. Very hard to explain and it's not something that I did. But it's, it's something I saw in another video. But um, the way I did it was I killed all the gunners in the left building. Which in itself is a pain in the ass. 
But I would clear all them out so that I could do the dance and dance around with all the fucking bullets while managing the fucking boss fireballs. It was an extreme amount of focus that it took to be able to do that. I even made a whole video about getting into the, the mindset and the mental zone to, to take on something like that and to be able to do it. And that's going to be a whole other thing. I mean, I, can't, I don't really have time to get into all that here, but check out my video on mindset. It's probably, if you search uh, mindset on my channel, you'll probably see it under that. And I, I, I actually show me dying on that boss for like probably over an hour and a half and just talking about what it takes mentally, you know, just trying to, trying to explain it. So let me see if there's anything else I missed. Now this level, if you thought the last boss was fucking hard, and he may have not been that hard for you if you used the strategy that I tried to explain, but if you thought the last boss was difficult, then this boss is a complete fucking nightmare. This one took me over nine fucking hours to beat. It was the hardest boss in the game for me, the Indian. And the level is also the longest and hardest of all the levels. So um, this stage is going to be the worst thing you deal with in the game, most likely. Now, it's going to vary for players. Some people have more difficulty with other parts, obviously, than, than you know. It, it is relative to the player. But uh, for me, this boss was, was a huge fucking bitch, and I really don't have any good tips for the, um, for the Indian. The previous boss, it was pretty much all about moving left to right constantly while do dodging and dancing you know, around the bullets staying just out of range of each fucking bullet, which is something you just learn through muscle memory and playing the game. And, you know, on top of that, you had to be mindful of that, of that rhythm of the fireballs that he shoots. There's kind of a pulse and rhythm to it that you go by feel. You don't even, um, it just comes down to feel. It's like, you don't, you, don't, you know, you, you can't really think about it. It has to be in your muscle memory and you just keep moving and you're able to kind of just feel a pulse of when the fireball is going to come out. And uh, you just keep moving and you're, you're feeling that pulse and you're, you know, you're, kind of preemptively dodging it before it even comes out, you know, and that's just, that's the kind of shit that just comes with, you know, intense amounts of practice and failure. So like I said, that's why it's so hard to try to make this into a tutorial. So, I mean, I, I can only try to explain. Now, I practiced, um, I did a lot of isolated practice on bosses, you know, save and load stay, practicing bosses for hours straight when I needed to. I recommend doing that on pretty much every boss that you that you die on or have trouble with. Usually you get checkpoints that are not that far away from the bosses, but um, they can still be dense and difficult, but you will learn them after a while because you're going to keep dying and having to get back to the boss. But of course, if you do isolated boss practice with save states, you don't have to keep doing that checkpoint over. You can just keep loading the state and practicing for as much time as you need until you get a feel for the boss. But some of these bosses are so ridiculous, I didn't even know how to approach them or how to how to dodge or practice them or do anything with them, you know, and I could watch videos all day, but I didn't, I still didn't understand what to actually do. And that's going to be the same thing with this video. You're going to see me playing these guys. And a lot of times it's going to look easier because, you know, you're seeing the successful attempt, but, um, and a lot of times things went a lot better than they, than they normally would. So, um, you know, it's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of fucking practice and a lot of death. I left uh, maybe one death in the video to show a transition that would have been awkward otherwise. But other than that, all the deaths are edited out. Because, you know, you'd be watching a, a video that's over 20 hours long if I showed all my footage of, the, of playing a game. This game does have unlimited continues and it has checkpoints in the levels. There's a few checkpoints in each level, usually. Uh, well, let me see... Uh, Yeah, I think I pretty much covered everything that I had in my notes. I just wanted to make sure because a lot of times I finish a tutorial video and there's shit that I left out. Now, with this level, I haven't been explaining a lot about what to do in the actual level because, I mean, look at this fucking shit. I mean, what can I really say about this? I mean, all you can really do is try to take out the spawns as much as you can. You're not going to be able to take out all these fucking enemies. So you're going to have to learn to take out the guys that are in your way that are causing you a problem. You know what I mean? And you're going to have to carve out your own path for this shit. It's not going to really be helpful to watch my video and try to follow it exactly with this. It's just like practice, practice, die, die, die. Now this boss is ridiculous. It's fucking insane. So don't, uh, don't stress if it takes you an immense amount of time. Like I said, it took over nine hours to do this checkpoint that's only about a minute long. So, you know, if you, you know I mean, that's pretty fucking extreme. Now, this went really well. Usually, I would not land hits on the boss like this. 
You always want to try to get both bullet streams to go into the boss if you can, but a lot of times I'm so focused on my character that the boss is in my peripheral vision. You got to learn how to focus your eyesight and your your and your uh, your mind to focus on things in the peripheral, you know. And you got to be able to switch because a lot of times you're going to be just focusing on your player and the immediate surroundings of of your player. If you try to look at the boss, you're probably going to be dead. The game is so fucking vicious that if you look at something, if you try to look at the boss's health bar. You know, you're, you're fucked. You're pretty much going to be dead if you look at the boss's health bar. So you really got to be stuck in that in that zone and focused on your character and, and what's around. And you got to be able to use that peripheral vision. You know, just having a blurry image of the boss in your in your sight. And that you, that's the way you have to really play this. I was also playing on a 65-inch screen from a 5-foot viewing distance. Maybe not the best way to play old games like this. But, you know, I am kind of fucking stubborn. And that is how I have everything set up. Because I play modern games on that setup as well as very fucking old games. So yeah, for the Indian, I mean like, I wish there was something that I could say to be helpful with it. But it was fucking brutal and I can't really say I learned much from that fight. It was just like feel. It was again, it was it was feeling the fight out. There's like a pulse to the shots. But what's so hard about the Indian is you got a shit ton of enemies like usual. But you got an, a boss that shoots out a spread shot of three shots at once. So it makes it insanely difficult because they're they're like super fucking fast. So you're not going to really dodge them if they're if they're aimed at you. You're pretty much dead. So to get in those gaps and shit and feel the pulse of the of the uh, the boss and kind of just you know and it's it's also of course luck too. But luck may buy you half a second of survival in this game. But this game is just so ridiculous. The enemies are so precise and fast that. You can't really even survive much at all on, on luck. So it's pretty much like if you die, it's because you fucked up. And you're going to be reminded of that thousands of times, most likely, by the time you beat this game. Now, the good news is, if you did manage to beat the Indian, you have a very high chance of beating the game. Because the rest of the levels and bosses are not nearly as hard with the tricks that I show. This boss is very easy. There's really nothing to say. This is how uneven this game is in difficulty. You go from extreme boss to something that's like the first boss easy. You know what I mean? This is fucking easy shit. You just hit him when he stands up. And just stay out of range of his fire extremely easy boss for what we've been dealing with so i'm not going to say much else about that but now if you beat the indian the rest of the um levels and game is not bad i'm going to show you some crazy fucking strategies now it's not shit that i came up with but i'm going to demonstrate it and for the final boss i actually used a combination of two strategies that i saw and i implemented them in a way that felt comfortable to me which i'll explain when we get to the final boss that's one that took me six and a half hours to beat that final boss checkpoint that was another fucking extreme part so, the rest of the game, you shouldn't have much of a problem until you get to that final fucking boss. Then expect to be uh, dying a lot and practicing a lot when you get to that point. So, yeah, now this level itself, this level is kind of hard. But, like I said, after all the shit you've beaten, you'll be able to get through this. There was something I recommend for this level that helped me a lot when I went back to it. I took a little bit of a break because I was getting fucking frustrated with this level. Um, and... One thing that fucking helped is, once I get to about the second checkpoint, I think it's right here, I stopped getting the power-ups. So now, even if I didn't have any power-ups right now, I, maybe it wasn't here because I see I'm still getting power-ups, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. Once I get to a certain point, I stop trying to get the power-ups, though, because what happens is if you try to get those power-ups, a lot of times you're going to get killed shooting those barrels and trying to grab the power-ups. So um, you would be surprised by changing the way you focus on a part. You can beat it a lot easier because the more shit you have to focus on, the more shit that can go wrong. If you simplify a path, make it as fucking simple as possible, you have such a much you know, higher chance of getting through something. The more simpler you can make something and the more you can simplify your movements, the easier it's going to be. Because, you know, the more you got to focus on, this is already enough bullshit to deal with. But if you got to think about other shit and try to make decisions... You know, you're going to be making split-second decisions anyway, but... Now, you see, I took that boss out immediately. You see, he didn't even have a chance to appear on screen, so now slow that video down to, like, 20, 0.25 or, like, half speed. On YouTube, you can slow videos down to, like, half speed in the settings. Slow it down, and you'll see exactly how I position myself in the center of the screen, firing straight up, and if you do that, you'll kill the boss before he can even fully appear on the screen. You didn't even see him. It's a crazy glitch where the boss doesn't have any invincibility frames, apparently, so he just gets wiped out by all your bullets. But you got to do it like that. 
I never even fought that boss uh, normally. I just saw that in a video and I just did that. So that's a very easy fucking skip. Highly recommend that because I think that boss is actually very difficult, but he's not if you do that. So just get, you know, look at the video and see exactly how I'm positioned and try to mimic it. And you should get it eventually. I got it within a few tries of trying to do it. I never even had to fight the boss. I may have got it on my first time even getting to the boss, I think. I think I did it the first time I got to the boss. Yeah, very easy to do. So, yeah, a lot of times what's going to help you in this game on the actual levels, like I said, is ignoring the power-ups. Even if you have no power-ups, start from the checkpoint with no power-ups and just ignore all the barrels and focus on trying to stay alive and clearing out all the enemies that are, are going to cause you problems. You know, you, you really need to clear out mainly the gray enemies with the brown vest because those are the ones that will get behind you and kill you. If any of those guys get behind you, you're, you're almost fucked. I mean, a lot of times you cannot survive. It's just a matter of time before they wipe you out. So, um, You also got to be wary of the guys on the buildings. They're kind of cutting off your play area here by firing constantly at half of the screen. So you got to work around that. A lot of times I don't kill them because I just work around them because it's easier just for me to move through on the, on the far end of the screen than deal with them. So I, I prefer that method a lot of times. Whenever you have the dynamite enemies, um, by this point you probably realize that you can pick up the dynamite off the ground before it explodes. Now picking it up doesn't mean you can use it. It just means you get rid of it so it doesn't explode on you. Once it's flashing, stay away from it because it explodes very fast once it starts flashing. Now for this guy, all you got to do is go up on the right side. I like going up all the way on the right side, and I like staying above his diagonal stream of fire. And I just fire diagonal into his shoulders, basically, both bullet streams. Kills him very fast, but this took me like 50 minutes to do on this boss, so don't think you're going to get in here and probably do that on the first try. You might, but it may take a while. Even when you know that trick, it's fucking hard, obviously, because it's gun smoke, so... It's going to be hard with all those enemies moving around. You have very little room to dodge enemies when you do that trick. But if you position yourself like you saw me position myself, you fire diagonally into him like that, and his bullet streams can't hit you because he only fires at a diagonal angle downward. So you just stay above that stream and fire into him. That's all. All right, so now we are on the final stage. Now, the stage itself, it's a little tricky, but it's nothing, you know, it, it's nothing harder than some of the other shit that we've dealt with in the stages. It's not that hard compared to, you know, relative to everything else. So there's no new enemies or anything for me to explain. As I said with the dynamite, you know, try to grab it when you can. You can see my editing when I edit deaths out, how shit just disappears. Those are checkpoints. So if you see that, that's, that's, you'll know where the checkpoint is in the level because those, tra those editing transitions show all the checkpoints. So I don't even need to mention when those checkpoints appear. You'll be able to see that janky-ass fucking edit. So, um... Yeah, and see, I don't remember all the exact specifics of my paths and everything I did in the actual levels. So, it's very hard to describe, and it's not the same every time. And you see how close I am dancing with death here. I mean, it's ridiculous, this game. I mean, you die like it's nothing. So now, here is the final checkpoint of the game. Now I'm going to have to explain some things kind of fast. Now for this part, you can kind of fire straight up and run through this point where you see me on the bottom of the screen over the bridge. And you want to fire straight up when you're um, at that bridge part. Fire straight up and take out... Uh, well, I didn't have time to explain that. But first take out this right guy. Take out the, the first boss on the right. Get up in this corner up here. Fire diagonally so the boss is getting shot as soon as he appears and move down immediately. Now get in this little safe spot here. See that nook that I was hanging out in? Right down here, firing left, right, left, right, left, right. That takes out the enemies. It's not a safe spot, but it's a safer spot. There are no safe spots, but there are safer, safer spots. So I kind of pivot here and take out these guys in that little nook. Then I come up here, and the top of the bridge is somewhat of a semi-safe spot. It's still very dangerous. But then I get up here and I fire diagonally at the boss. Now, I was able to take him out very fast in that playthrough. It usually doesn't happen like that. And as far as how I got through those streams of bullets, what I did was I waited for him to fire his spread shot of bullets. And pretty much as that spread shot's coming out, I'm already starting to move upward. And I move up past. It's a very fast timing. You have to get a feel for it. And it takes a shitload of practice to get. But once you get that rhythm, you can get up in there and get to that boss. And you're going to have to practice that and like exactly when the move after that spread shot is fired. And um, you can only hit the boss when he's standing. 
So you can't hurt him when he, unless he's standing. So don't even go up there unless the guy's standing up to try to hurt him. And always use that right bridge that I use. And then you can let the other boss stay alive. There's three bosses in that fight. There's one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. I let the left, left one stay alive because when I kill the left one and the right one, it seems like the boss fires faster. But I don't know. I had problems with that. So I only use the right side of the screen to take out that boss. So I recommend using those two safe spots, the one little nook below the bridge that I kind of pivot on. And then there's another area at the top of the bridge that's a little bit safe. It's pretty much the limit of how far you can go up on the screen. It doesn't let you go up any higher than that. And you can kind of just go up there and like take shots at the boss from that location. And then you got to get back down, kind of pivot in place, kill the enemies, and then try to move back up and take another shot at the boss. But, but what you got to do is you got to move up while shooting diagonally and get the fuck out of the area immediately. You don't stay up there and try to hit the boss for any length of time. You get up in that boss area to take your shots, and then you start moving down immediately and get back to that little safe area where you pivot and shoot the enemies. Um, yeah, it's very fucking hard to explain. I mean, I tried my best to try to explain it. If you have any questions, you know, don't don't hesitate to ask. The other thing I was trying to describe was right before the boss, there's an area with three barrels or so, and those are the power-ups that you need for the boss. you got to have the boot, and you got to have the... Um, you really want to have the rifle for the distance shots. You don't need the rapid-fire uh, bullet icon thing, but it's good to get all three. But if you don't have the boot, you're really fucked. So you really, you at least need that. Now, to get those power-ups, you have to practice that section. Make a safe state on the part with the with the, uh, with the power-ups so you can practice how to get those power-ups. Now, what I did is watch very closely how I played it in my video. I stay at the bottom right corner as soon as I go over that bridge where the power-ups are. I, sh I fire straight up. It takes out an enemy, one of those gray enemies, then I immediately sweep over and move to the left side immediately while shooting diagonal, diagonally right to take out the enemies as I'm moving over towards the power-ups. Very fucking hard to explain, but I did it like that and I was able to consistently get the power-ups like most of the time, but I still died a lot because the spawns change constantly in this game. It's not even consistent, but um, I think I explained it about the best I could. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.